A binary signal is either a 1 or a 0, which can be thought of as yes or no. Logic gates are that perform basic logical operations on binary signals. They perform logical operations on one or more binary inputs to produce a single binary output. Each type of gate performs a different operation and has a different truth table that defines its behavior. The AND gate produces a one output only if both inputs are one. Think of it like a traffic light that only turns green if two conditions are met. The OR gate produces a one output if either of the inputs are one. Think of it like a yes or no question where either answer is acceptable. The NOT gate inverts the input signal. If the input is 1, the output is 0, and if the input is 0, the output is 1. Think of it like a switch that turns yes into no and vice versa. In this video, we'll explore the special logic operation exclusive or often called XOR gate. We will explore how it works and why it's used in computer logic circuits and especially in cryptography. XOR compares two binary inputs and produces a binary output that is one if and only if exactly one of the inputs is one. In other words, the XOR operation is performed bitwise, meaning that each bit of the input values is compared and processed separately. If both input bits are the same, the output bit is zero. If the input bits are different, the output bit is one. Modern cryptography relies heavily on XOR. In mathematics and cryptography, XOR is commonly represented by a cross and a circle. In this video, we'll use the same notation. We can see here that the output for XOR is 1 when one input is 1 but not both for example. 0 XOR 0 is 0. 1 XOR 0 is 1. 0 XOR 1 is 1. 1 XOR 1 is 0. Based on this, we can drive useful arithmetic tricks. Any input XOR to itself becomes zero. This is an important property of XOR to keep in mind, we'll talk about it soon. Also, any input XOR to zero is the original input. This is another important property of XOR to keep in mind. The real magic happens when we apply XOR twice to any input with a value, and it will reverse the effect of XOR. Why is this important? And what makes is extremely useful for cryptography? Suppose we take a message M and XOR it with a key K, we get M ZOR K, if we XOR the key a second time. We get M ZOR K ZOR K, which is equal to M itself. Let's find out how it happens. If you remember, we discussed earlier if anything XOR to itself is zero. So we can replace K ZOR K with zero. Further, anything XOR to zero is the original value, so M XOR zero will equal M, we can take this example, and here we have our simple and powerful encryption algorithm. You can think of K as a key. It first encrypts message M and then decrypts it again. Let's try to work out an example. Suppose you want to send a secret message of two character words OK. First, we need to convert the OK to its ASCII value in binary and then it can be encrypted with the following repeating key as shown here. In binary, the ASCII representation of OK is shown on the screen. We will perform XOR operation bit by bit our message to the encrypted message. The output for XOR is 1 when one input is 1 but not both. If we perform the XOR operation on the result with the key again, it will give us back the original message as you can see on the screen. The XOR encryption algorithm is an example of symmetric encryption where the same key is used to encrypt and decrypt a message. The XOR operator is extremely common as a component in more complex ciphers. The primary reason XOR is so useful in cryptography is that it is perfectly balanced and evenly distributes the occurrences of 0 and 1 for a truly random key bit. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the channel for future videos and updates.